A tech pack is one of the most important documents for a fashion designer, particularly a designer who is working with a manufacturer. Now there are several different types of software that can help you create a tech pack, which I talked about in this video. But more than likely, if you're a smaller independent designer or a brand, or you're just starting out, you wanna use the resources you already have without spending extra money on a new program or spending time learning it. So many people use Excel to create their tech packs and some other program, my suggestion is Illustrator, to get their fashion flats into Excel. And that all sounds good, but the issues come usually when you're ready to get the two programs to work together. Welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Mikkel Drew Pelham. I am a digital fashion educator teaching digital fashion design and communication through my company, 383 Design Studio, as well as an adjunct professor at the Fashion Institute of Technology. First, if you're not completely sure what a tech pack is and why it's so important, it might be a good idea to check out this video first. I know the phrase tech pack gets thrown around a lot. And a lot of people know they need one, but I've met a lot of new designers in the last few years that don't really understand the who, what, when, where, and why of a tech pack. But for those of you who understand them and are in the process of creating one in Excel, the main thing that needs to happen is you need to find a way to get your fashion flats and detail callouts out of the initial program you drew them in, in this case, Illustrator, and into Excel. And for whatever reason, this is often a sticking point for my students when we do this. Either they can't get the sketch into the program or it's blurry or it's covering up something else. And it really doesn't have to be that tricky if you follow these steps. It's totally fine if the sketch is bigger than the area it needs to go into. Scaling down the sketch in Excel won't visibly make it pixelate. Usually the problem comes when the sketch is too small and you try to make it bigger. So to avoid any issues altogether, I just make my sketches a little bigger than I know they need to be before I export them. And when I get them into Excel, I make them smaller. This isn't an absolute must, but I think it's easier if you have to rearrange anything or if you're someone who likes to show the front view bigger and the back view slightly smaller. It just makes the arrangement in Excel easier. There's two ways to get your sketches out of Illustrator and into Excel. You can either do a copy and paste trick, which I talk about in this video, or you can export your sketches. My preference is always exporting because if you have more than just a front and a back view, if you've got detail sketches or detail callouts or any other kinds of sketches, you can export them all at once as opposed to copy and pasting multiple times. In that same video, I also suggested that you can either export a JPEG or a ping file, but I'm going to suggest you just stick with using ping files. Whenever I've tested the two, I've always found that the ping file is clearer. So just stick with that. And here are the settings you want to use to get the best result. After you go to file, export, export as, choose a format. The default is ping and make sure you check the box right below that to use artboards. If you're not planning to export all of your sketches, make sure you type the page number of the pages you want to export in the range section. And then when you get to the ping options, make sure you change the resolution to at least 150 PPI. This is usually why my students have problems. If you've never changed these settings before, the default is 72 PPI, which is horrible resolution. So if you forget to change that, when you add the sketch to Excel, it's going to look really pixelated and really blurry. Just terrible. So don't forget this step. And keep in mind that the resolution also affects the file size. Higher resolution creates larger files, so stay mindful of that as well. So you might think, okay, well, let me set it to the highest resolution, but you actually don't need to do that. You'll be creating a very large file for no reason. 150 to 200 PPI is as large as you really need 
to go for resolution for a sketch that will most likely only be viewed on screen and potentially printed on a letter size or A4 piece of paper. Anti-aliasing helps to soften the appearance of the sketch and make the lines look a little less jagged. I usually set this to art optimized or none. Leave the interlaced box checked. And the last thing you wanna set is the background color. Set it to transparent and I'll show you why. Once you add the sketch to Excel, you're putting it on a white piece of paper. So not having a transparent background isn't such a big deal as long as you precisely position the sketch. But as soon as it overlaps a line or cell with text, that white background can cover up what's there. And yes, there are settings that can help remedy this issue, but if you're like most designers I work with, the less we have to do in Excel, the better. So just do yourself a favor and make sure you set the background color to transparent. And one of the nice things about these ping settings is that once you change them, they'll stay the same the next time you have to export a sketch, unless you decide to change them. So you don't have to up these settings every single time. Find your ping files and drag them onto your Excel document. If you can't do drag and drop, you can choose insert, picture, picture from file. And in the newer versions of Excel, there's a ribbon across the top of the page that will also allow you to do this. If you're using Google Sheets, go to insert, image, image over cells. The other pages in the tech pack are more chart and table format and require you to type in information. So once you get your sketches into Excel, the rest is done within the program. Thanks for watching today's video and I hope it cleared up one of the bigger obstacles for those of you working with Excel and Illustrator. If you need formal step-by-step -step instruction on how to complete that tech pack, including how to measure a sample so you can complete those spec and design measurements pages, make sure you check out the link in the description to sign up for my tech pack course. Be sure to like, comment, subscribe, and share this video if you find it helpful. Have a fantastic week and I'll see you next time.